Did this Game Boy just get a 1-up? Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Now let's talk about some retro handheld gaming. This is the GPI Game Boy case by Retroflag. Retroflag is a manufacturing company dedicated to building really neat cases for the Raspberry Pi single board computers. They've made some excellent cases for the NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sony PlayStation, and this one here, the Game Boy. The GPI case has a premium plastic shell. It was originally made for the Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W, but more on that in a second. The case also comes with a safe shutdown power button, a 3.5 mm headphone jack, an LED battery indicator light, and 2.8 IPS display. You'll also notice the device has four ABXY face buttons, a D-pad, and your start and select, all the buttons are heavily designed after the 1980s Nintendo Game Boy. On the left side of the device, we have our contrast up and down rocker and a DC 5 volt port. This port does not charge the batteries in this device, however, so keep that in mind. On the right side of the device, we have the volume up and down rocker and a micro SD card slot for the Raspberry Pi. Flipping the device over, on the back we have our battery compartment. One thing to note is this device takes three AA batteries. Now that may be a downside for some users, however I find it to be nostalgic and it gives the device some much needed weight. Behind the batteries we have a slider to turn the safe shutdown on or off. I strongly recommend that you have it in the on position to not corrupt a microSD card when shutting down the device. One complaint I do have about this device is of the somewhat hidden L and R buttons. I find them to be a bit difficult to push and slightly awkward. Lastly, let's talk about our cartridge slot. This section actually pulls out and inside houses our Raspberry Pi Zero. I put my own cartridge sticker on it for a Game Boy game that I've been working on in my spare time called Everstar. If you'd like to see me do a video in the future about making a Game Boy game, let me know in the comments down below. Like I stated before, this device was created with the Raspberry Pi Zero and Zero W in mind. However, it's official that the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 is functional for this case. Now let's do a quick comparison between the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. The Raspberry Pi Zero was released February 26, 2017, while the Zero 2 was October 28, 2021. They both have the exact same size dimensions, However, the Zero has a Broadcom BCM2835 SoC at 1 GHz, while the Zero 2 has the Quad Core. They both have the same exact GPU, the Video Core 4. The Zero has the 512 MB DDR POP. Zero 2 has the 512 MB 450 MHz of DDR2. Other slight differences is that the Zero has the 4.1 Bluetooth while the Zero 2 has 4.2. They both have BGN 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network connection. However, the Zero 2 has an improved antenna. All right, let's go ahead and get into taking apart the device. Go ahead and start by getting the SD card out of the back. So we're gonna flip the cartridge over and on the back we have four screws. We're gonna go ahead and remove these four screws to take the cartridge apart. Now that we got the cartridge apart, you should be left with this, which is the Raspberry Pi Zero One, along with the retro flag chip that makes it all work. So it is plugged in up top here by this uh, plug here and a thin ribbon cable. Be very careful with that when removing it. All right, so now that we got it removed, we're left with the retro flag pin. Here are the 40 pins. Uh, that connect to these 40 pins here. And basically, you kind of just make a sandwich out of uh, the circuit boards here. So here we want to carefully plug that cable back in to the top and kind of just helps you hold it into place here. 
Real quick down here at the bottom, you see how the 40 pin works. Basically when you get sandwiched in, uh, it kind of squishes and that's what makes it work. Let's go ahead and grab our face now and put our cartridge back together. With everything put back together, now let's set up the micro SD card. Let's head on over to our PC and download the RPI image from Recall Box. The link will be included down in the description below. Let's also go ahead and download Etcher so that way we can flash the SD card with the Recall Box image. Alright, as you can see here, we have our Recall Box image and also Etcher opened. Let's go ahead and select the image here. And then let's go ahead and select our micro SD card. Be sure to actually select the card and not another drive on your device. Make sure you don't have any USBs plugged in as you don't want to accidentally wipe out that uh, memory. All right, now that we've got everything selected, let's go ahead and push flash now. This process does take a minute as it goes through, wipes the SD card, then writes the image, and then afterwards it will also finalize and make sure that there's no errors with it. All right, looks like that was a success. Let's go ahead and uh, unplug our micro SD card from the computer here and go ahead and plug it back into our RetroFlag game. All right, here we are back on the device. Now uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. And this boot process takes a minute for the first time boot up as it's gonna start registering the micro SD card. It's gotta install a bunch of files. And uh, also the recall box comes with uh, games kind of already installed and also music and pictures so this does take a minute we'll go ahead and fast forward through this portion All right, so it looks like everything's done now. Um, here it is. This looks pretty great. No, this is this is great. And like I said, it comes with games already kind of installed. Uh, looks like fan-made games. Looks like just kind of some homebrew stuff is already put on here, which is awesome that they include it. So you're ready to go right when installing the SD card. If you're wanting to add your own ROMs and games, uh, it's really easy and simple to do. Simply take the micro SD card out of the system and put it back into your PC. Find the share folder in your Windows Explorer. As you can see, Recall Box has labeled just about everything out for us, making it really easy. I've got a few games set aside here, so let's go ahead and open up the ROMs folder in the share drive. And I have some Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1. Uh, so I will drag these games over and put them in their corresponding folder. Also keep in mind that some systems require a BIOS file to run properly and you can add your BIOS file in the BIOS folder, again on the root of the share drive. All right, now that we got everything transferred over, let's go ahead and plug this back into the uh, Retro Flag Pi case. I gotta say, this is the first time I'm using Recall Box, and the default interface is actually quite nice and clean. It's nice that they already kind of have some background music going. I can't play it due to copyright, but it's kind of nice that that just comes pre-packaged with everything. Um, a thing that's a little weird that it's probably editable and I just haven't messed with it yet is that the B button is A and the A button is B but that's probably something like I said that I can edit in the settings here. So as I stated before the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W came out October 28th 2021 and can support the PlayStation with no problem. The Zero 2 can even play some Sega Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. However not all titles work Keep in mind that some Nintendo 64 games will play a little weird due to the lack of the buttons. 
In person, the Retro Flag screen looks very crisp and vivid. If you're wanting to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance, nothing can really beat the Retro Flag GPI case to give it that almost authentic feel. Not only is it the perfect aesthetic for handheld gaming, but the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 also has built-in Wi-Fi for retro achievements. For a quick tutorial on retro achievements, check out my other video where I review the RG351MP. I'll link that in the description below. So let's check out some footage of the Raspberry Pi in action. Figured we'd kick off with PlayStation right off the bat and play some Battle Hunter. So we just finished our name. Let's get some stats going. Let's go ahead and pick our guy. For those of you that haven't played this, this game is a uh, tactical role-playing game where it kind of mixes throwing in some dice rolls and card game. Uh, and basically, you're a battle hunter and you're looking for treasure. And you get them from this dude. So after talking with the shopkeep guy for a bit, you end up going into the dungeon and this is what you look for. So this is a four player game uh, and it is compatible with the multi-tap, but go ahead and start uh, trying to get around. Oh, nice. I found the piece right away. Okay. That was lucky. Master Chief. Real quick, I just want to show kind of how the battle works in this game is that basically it rolls dice and depending on the numbers is how much damage you do. Pretty neat game. You should check it out. With all the hype out there of the uh, Sonic 2 trailer coming out, figured we should probably play Sonic 2. I also just want to preface this is that I was playing this off a monitor that was being recorded. Uh, so th this is pretty bad. I got to say the system handles really well. Um, there's no screen tearing. On the uh, first zero, I was noticed that there the screen would tear when playing Sonic, running around. Um, on here, just not getting that at all. Lastly, for uh testing gameplay we're going to try the nintendo 64 and we're going to try majora's mask right away we hear the audio just not keeping up uh this will probably be a lost cause Oof, that is rough. So, unfortunately, probably Majora's Mask is a bit too ambitious for this machine. Let's go ahead and skip ahead and see what's later on. So I gotta say, during the first kind of cutscene here, it's playing a little bit better. There's still that audio stutter from time to time, but it's not that bad. That was pretty bad.
I like how Link's audio is like just sometimes coming in and sometimes not. We are definitely pushing this to its limit here. All right, now uh, let's check out some uh, actual playing. Uh, nope. All right, well, it actually crashed on me. So anyways, <laughs> moving on. Even if you have the GPI case with the Raspberry Pi Zero in it, I'd say it's worth the upgrade for the Zero too. The difference in performance alone more than makes up for the cost of the board. Is it the most powerful handheld device? Well, no. But it looks great and it feels great for the casual gamer. You can get the Retro Flag GPI case and Zero 2 on Amazon. I'll leave links down below where you can get yours. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the Retro Flag GPI case. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. You can also follow me on social media at Modern Broadcast.